I find myself holding my breath just because I'm so stressed or just so anxious about this whole thing. This year, I'm voting for Biden and Harris because the number one thing on my agenda is to get Trump out the White House. This year, I'm voting for President Trump because he's the most pro-life candidate that we have on the ballot. I'm voting for Biden because I want to see change for disabled, black, immigrant, indigenous, LGBTQ+, and trans lives. There's no such thing as a labor party or a working class party in the United States, and so I most often register as a Democrat because uh, you have to work within the system. But I'm also not foolish. I'm a conservative and I'm gonna be voting for President Trump this year. You shouldn't be voting for somebody just because you don't respect or like the other candidate they're running against. I really wanted to find out why everybody hated Trump so much. I never really found out. This year we're faced with the prospect of either having a democratic republic where everybody gets a voice in government and has their civil rights protected or having flat out fascism. I hear a lot of people pointing fingers at Trump. He's a fascist, okay? Tell me why he's a fascist. Please do the research and inform yourself so you can actually elaborate on these opinions that you might have. This year's election is very important to me because I believe the left is trying to expand the powers of the government through democratic socialism. As a conservative, I believe we need to have limited government. I don't wanna believe that I live in a country where the leader is openly racist and self-serving in 2020. Cause I mean, America, it's like, <laughs> been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Not only am I worried about my and other disabled people's rights in terms of education, employment, healthcare, and housing, but I'm also worried for our immigrant communities and families. 2016, I voted for Trump and I'm glad I get to vote for him again because he has done an excellent job over the last four years. After three and a half years, nearly four years of, of con after con and, and theft after theft, if you, you're still on the con, well, once again, I, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're just plum simple. I hope that the people who voted for Trump in 2016 come out to the polls in 2020 and make a better decision than they did last election. So it is currently election day. I have voted. I got up bright and early at 6.30 a.m. to go vote. No significant news has come out as of right now. I haven't slept much. Uh, last night. As usual, down here in Orlando, Florida, we're still in the thick of, of an election. Florida's been in the thick of uh, crooked elections ever since Hector were a pup. Uh, goes, uh, well, all the way back to 1876 when the Florida electors were in disarray. It threw the election into the House of Representatives and they didn't even bother to settle it there. What happened was a backroom deal between uh, Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tillman which left our African-American brothers and sisters at the mercy of uh, Jim Crow laws and the uh, Klan and uh, repression. And basically, they were disenfranchised until the Civil Rights Act of 1960. We might not have a winner today because of so many mail-in ballots. And I think that there's a lot of people voting today. It's been predicted that more Trump supporters we're gonna come out on election day to cast their ballots just because we don't trust the uh, mail-in ballot system. Thankfully, the polling location isn't too far from me so I could literally drive to it. Who knows how accessible it is gonna be, so I guess we're just gonna have to find out. And literally last week, we had Hurricane Zeta hit us really bad too. Things were missing that I literally forgot about the elections until yesterday. I mean, yesterday the power went out a couple of times because they're still fixing the electricity poles. So I would imagine that accessibility and getting to those polls is probably one of the largest issues right now in Louisiana. There's going to be a lot of breathing exercises going on in this house. Allá, allá, vamos a salir a la calle. No, class. I remember I entered briefly once for Disability Rights Louisiana, and one of the biggest main issues in voting for them was accessibility. Getting to the polls is very hard for people in New Orleans. And again, the countryside is just as bad. I can't imagine the voting turnout if it was accessible to everyone. It's currently 6.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on election night. Uh, I'm feeling good. Things are looking good so far. Trump has a lead in New Hampshire, 
Indiana, and Biden is leading Kentucky. Um, they haven't called Florida yet, but it's not looking good. I, th I think it'll go to Trump. I, I planned originally to sit in front of my TV and bite my nails until it was all over, but that was driving me insane. And I don't know if you can tell in my voice, I'm very anxious, I'm very trying to harness my emotions. So it's currently 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Things are continuing to improve for President Trump. He is winning uh, eight to three in terms of electoral votes. Uh, Biden blew his lead in Kentucky. Trump has won Kentucky. I've been waiting for the polls to come in. So far, Trump is trending in a lot of good states. I mean, we had a lot of victories in states like, you know, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana. They went on and called Florida eventually. We'll see. Um, I'm super excited about it, though. When Indiana turned red today, the day of the election, I can almost understand how people who don't vote or people who are not fans of voting can feel like my little vote didn't make a difference. But I think that it's really important to watch tonight's coverage and to see these electoral college votes and get an understanding of how the system works and know that we don't live in a country that's just majority vote. So obviously I'm disappointed in Indiana for turning red, but it's a group project and I gotta count on everybody else to pull through. The only states that I'm particularly worried about right now is Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Texas. Tell me something good, Joe. We feel good about where we are. Do you? Cause I'm a little iffy. It is too early to make a solid determination at this point. We'll have to wait. Uh, until, you know, a later day. We don't know when that day is going to be. It could be a week from now. We don't know. Voter suppression remains a winning strategy for the GOP. I believe we can come together. If everyone agrees that these weren't the best candidates, then how about we just, you know, provide better candidates next time? Do our best to go out and make sure that we vouch for people that we truly really represents the ethos of America, right? I'm still friends with everybody. You still can come over for brisket. I don't care. If we didn't win this time, we'd definitely win next time. We'll just go harder. That's all I got to say. Whatever the result is, we're still going to organize and we're still going to fight for our communities. We're still going to take care of each other.